What else on income tax? Well, sort of nothing. Sort of nothing because we've already got it. The Labour government did the damage already. We've got the 50% tax rate. The, the, the headline rates, and other of my predictions that I'm sorry to say went terribly wrong, I thought, oh, I bet they won't be able to resist meddling with the basic rate of tax because the basic rate of income tax is broadly based. It's a bit like VAT. If you nudge the basic rate of income tax up a bit, money floods in. And you could say, oh, it doesn't matter because we're going to protect the lower paid by meddling with the personal allowance. You could have stuck two, three thousand pounds on the personal allowance. You could have got it much nearer to 10,000. You could have announced we've taken lots more people out of tax, but got all the money back and more by meddling with the rates. And I'm surprised they didn't do that. But perhaps they're not as Machiavellian as I am. Thank God. Right, the next one, the big one, capital gains tax. Now, yet another prediction that I got hopelessly wrong. Because my prediction was that they would not effect whatever change they were going to go for from the 22nd of June or even the 23rd of June. I mean, it's slightly surprising. Putting to, to put into one side my view that it should have been at the 6th of April, because capital gains tax, after all, is a tax year orientated tax. It is collected annually with your tax return, and obviously it's a transactional tax, so it's not impossible for different transactions to be taxed at different rates, but it does make it a bit messy, in my view. Obviously not in George Osborne's view, but in my view, it makes it messy. Um, Previously, any changes like this were effected from midnight of the previous day. When this came through, I was on the phone to two of my clients saying, uh, you know that advice I gave you that, no, don't worry about it, the 6th of April 2011 will be the date, you know, you can rest easy. Suddenly I was rather urgently telling them to get their skates on, they had six hours to go. Um, happily, one of them had done it already and the other one was in a position to make the disposal of the asset in question relatively easily because it was cash, dollars. Um, but anyway, so capital gains tax. The changes are from today, 23rd of June. And what have they done? Well, they have done sort of three things. What we now have, sort of, loosely, is what you might call a basic rate of capital gains tax. We're used to having a basic rate of income tax. Now, the way to think about it is to think we've got a basic rate of capital gains tax. And we're used to having a higher rate of income tax. And in fact, now we've got two higher rates of income tax, 40 and 50%. But there's only one higher rate of capital gains tax. But if you are a higher income tax payer and trigger a gain, you will be a higher capital gains tax payer. So the basic rate of capital gains tax is 18% the higher rate of capital gains tax is 28%. What about the 10% they shout? We want to know about that. If you're an entrepreneur as defined, your rate of tax is 10% on the first chunk of your gain. First chunk of your gain. What's the first chunk? You shout. What do I shout back? The first chunk used to be a million. When they first introduced this, 6th of April 2008, it was a million pounds. It went to 2 million on the 6th of April 2010. So it's only been 2, two million for the last few months. We're now told it's gone to 5 million. 5 million from today. So you could have the slightly odd situation that somebody, and there are people who have done this, so it's not that odd, some people could have thought, I've got my business sale to get through. I want to do it whilst the rates are as they are at the moment because I'm really worried about the rates going up. So I'll, here we are in May 2010. I'll make my disposal. I'll make my gain of, let's say, £3 million. Pounds. £2 million will be at the 10% rate. £1 million will be the 18% rate. And those people, if they'd have waited, would have got the whole £3 million at the 10% rate because now... <coughs> It's a £5 million pound threshold. But they can't somehow carry forward their million that was above the £2 million threshold and drag it into the, into the, into the post-22 June era. If they make a subsequent disposal 
then they've got another three million pounds worth to play with. So it's quite, quite interesting sort of peculiar rules. What they did not do, they didn't do anything to change the rules about what is a business asset for taper relief purposes. I just said taper relief. I didn't mean taper relief. I meant entrepreneur relief purposes. When we were debating this before the budget, we thought they're going to have to do something and the only logical thing is to reintroduce a sort of taper relief. They've sort of said business assets will be good, non-business assets will be bad. You can't just have a punitive rate, surely, on non-business assets. But yes, we have. We've, we've got that. So you pay 28% capital gains tax irrespective of the length of ownership. There is no taper relief. You pay 28% capital gains tax on your gain, irrespective of inflation. There is no indexation allowance. So we are back to taxing inflation gains with no acknowledgement of length of ownership whatsoever at potentially 28%. I think that is relatively penal, relatively penal. It's not absolutely penal, I accept that, but it is relatively penal. Um, I continue to believe the fairer model is a taper relief model. I was talking to a gentleman from Malta on Sunday and we were swapping notes about tax rates. And he said, oh, crikey, you know, 18%, that's very low. Oh, even 28%, that would be low because in Malta it's 35%. And I said, yes, 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 it's 35%. But what about your taper relief rules? He said, oh, yeah, 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 yes. If you own it long enough, like 10 years, you don't pay any tax at all. And I said, well, yeah, you can't, you can't compare headline rates of tax. And going back to corporation tax, which I've skipped over, the other soundbite that I liked from George Osborne yesterday was an acknowledgement of that in the corporation tax arena. He actually said, people look at the headline rate and we want our headline rate to be low. And it's true, I go on international conferences and you talk to the Americans and say, hey, gee, what's your rate of... Corporation tax, 28%, oh, that's nice and low. Uh, ours is 31, you think, well, yeah, yours is 31, but you get a tax deduction for amortizing freehold properties. There's, there's more allowances there. It's, it's a meaningless, meaningless figure. But anyway, that's what we've got. We have got basically three rates of capital gains tax. The old 10% rate used to be achieved by deducting four-ninths of the gain before applying the net figure at 18%. Because obviously 18% of 5 nines is 10%. That's how it worked. All that has gone out the window because applying stupid fractions has finally been uh, observed to be completely stupid. Um, and instead, it is just a 10% rate. If you're, a, if you're in the entrepreneur relief brand, it's 10%. If you're a basic rater, it's 18%. If you're a higher rater of whatever color, whether it's 40 or 50%, it's 28%. Um, the final point there, the annual exemption. There was much, much talk in the document for government about the annual exemption at £10,100 being far too high, far too generous. And that has not changed. There was talk about it being hacked to something like £2,000. That would have made completing capital gains tax returns or tax returns with capital gains on them a nightmare because the whole reason for the annual exemption is not as a bung to people who make gains. It's simply to stop people who make small gains having to declare them for capital gains tax purposes. But anyway, that's been held. That is good.